TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejects foreign calls for early elections in Israel during a time of war. IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Hiltzia Levy stresses that failure to eradicate Hamas, including in Rafah, would be a mistake. U.S. President Joe Biden voices support for Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, referring to his unprecedented criticism of Israel as a good speech. The Islamist Hamas, an internationally designated terror organization, can lay down its arms and surrender or else it will continue to face the IDF in full force. In a televised statement to the Nation of Israel last night, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Hiltzia Levy stressed that over 163 days since the brutal onslaught of the Islamist Hamas and its terror affiliates, which included a massacre of 1,200 mostly civilian Israelis, the IDF is deepening its achievements in the Gaza Strip. In the Gaza Strip, we are surprising the enemy, initiate and further deepen our military achievements. In the northern Gaza Strip, we are returning and initiating operational raids in areas where we previously operated, using new intelligence and different methods, expanding the damage to Hamas, killing operatives and destroying infrastructure in a targeted and high-quality manner. In the southern Gaza Strip, in Khan Yunus, we are concentrating an effort of quality forces to dismantle the Khan Yunus Brigade. We have killed many terrorists and apprehended many senior terror operatives for the purpose of interrogation. Those who remain alive, are hiding, have difficulty operating, we will reach them too. Hamas can lay down its weapons and surrender, otherwise, we will continue with great force until Hamas is completely dismantled and until the hostages are returned to their homes. Their return is one of the goals of the war, and the IDF will do everything in order to achieve it. The details of the negotiations should be left for discussion in the correct forums. We are working with determination in every possible manner to bring about the release of the hostages. One thing is certain, the IDF will implement any decision that is made and will know how to continue fighting at any stage. Hamas has chosen to escalate in Ramadan, and this will lead to increasing pressure. The RDF Chief of General Staff went on to address the relatively low-intensity war versus Hezbollah, which joined the battle against Israel since October 8th, when it launched unprovoked cross-border missiles towards the country's border communities. On the northern border, we continue to damage Hezbollah's operatives and its capabilities. Hezbollah started the hostilities, and it is paying a heavy price for its aggression, a price that continues to rise. I am alert and attentive to the great difficulty of the residents of the north, who have been evaluated from their homes for a very long time. We will return the residents only with full security. To that end, we will go through any means necessary the IDF and its commanders are ready and determined to make this happen. This is our duty. General Halevi also briefly addressed ongoing operational efforts to target terror elements throughout the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria, where the IDF, ISA, and Border Police Special Operations Units have apprehended over 3,500 suspected terror operatives, of whom 1,500 were corroborated as having an affiliation to the Islamist Hamas. In Judea and Samaria, we operate, protect, and thwart terrorism around the clock together with the ISA and with Israel police for the sake of the security of the communities, roads, and the scene line. While managing the separate battlefields, both near and far, 
The top IDF officer further seized the opportunity to acknowledge preparations for the Rafah offensive, warning against failure to eradicate all of Hamas capabilities, wherever it may be. Alongside managing the combat, we continue to plan continued strikes in areas where we have not yet operated. The IDF is preparing for attacks in these additional areas and together with the political echelon we will decide on the timing and on the right conditions of the strikes. As soon as it is decided, the IDF will act with full force and determination. We are determined to operate wherever Hamas builds its force. It is wrong to leave Hamas with functioning battalions and brigades. Meanwhile in Jerusalem, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in remarks to his cabinet pushed back against statements made by leading Western lawmakers and leaders calling for an early election in Israel. Since the start of the war, we have been fighting on two fronts, military and diplomatic. On the diplomatic front, until now we have succeeded in allowing our forces to fight in an unprecedented manner for five full months. However, it is no secret that international pressure is mounting against us. In the international community, there are those who are trying to stop the war now, before all of its goals have been achieved. They are doing so by hurling false accusations at the IDF, the government of Israel and the Prime Minister of Israel. They are doing so by means of an effort to bring about elections now, at the height of the war. They are doing this because they know that elections now will halt the war and paralyze the country for at least six months. Then let it be clear, if we stop the war now, before all of its goals are achieved, this means that Israel will have lost the war, and this we will not allow. Therefore, we cannot, and will not, succumb to this pressure. On the contrary, this simple truth only strengthens our determination to continue rejecting the pressure and fighting to the end, to total victory. The Israeli premier went on to assert that international pressure would not frustrate Jerusalem from achieving its war objectives vis-à-vis -vis the Islamist Hamas. No international pressure will stop us from realizing all of the goals of the war, eliminating Hamas, freeing all of our hostages and ensuring that Gaza never again constitutes a threat to Israel. In order to do this, we will operate in Rafa. This is the only way to eliminate Hamas's murderous brigades, and this is the only way to use the military pressure necessary to free all of our hostages. To this end, we have approved the operational plans for action in Rafa, including advancing the steps to evaluate the civilian population from the combat zones. This is an essential stage ahead of the military action. Those who say that the action in Rafa will not occur are those who also said that we would not enter Gaza or act in Shifa or in Khan Yunus and that we would not resume the fighting after the lull. Therefore, I reiterate, we will operate in Rafa. This will take several weeks and it will happen. Prime Minister Netanyahu continued by directly addressing Israeli allies and partners who've dramatically altered their tone vis-à-vis -vis support for Jerusalem's war objectives versus the internationally recognized terror groups Hamas. To our friends in the international community, I say, is your memory that short? Have you so quickly forgotten October 7th, the most horrific massacre of Jews since the Holocaust? Are you so quick to deny Israel the right to defend itself against the Hamas monsters? Have you so quickly lost your moral consciences? Instead of pressuring Israel, which is fighting a war, the justice of which is unparalleled, against an enemy of unparalleled brutality, apply your pressure to Hamas and its patron, Iran. They are those who constitute a danger to the region and to the entire world. In any case, we will withstand any pressure and with God's help, we will continue to fight together until total victory. It is worth highlighting that while the Biden administration sought to slightly distance itself from remarks made by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who threatened Israel with consequences unless it votes a different government into office, 
President Joe Biden revealed that Senator Schumer's staff maintained contact with his own and that it was a good speech that reflected serious concern shared by many Americans. Senator Schumer uh, contacted my staff, my senior staff, he's going to make that speech. And uh, he, uh, I'm not going to elaborate on the speech. He made a good speech, and I think he uh, expressed a serious concern shared not only by him, but by many Americans. Despite separate polls by leading polling institutes, including in the United States, which clearly portrayed overwhelming support for Israel in its war against Islamist Hamas, political considerations are seemingly driving the latest string of critical statements against Israel. Well, the president spoke about the, the, the passion with which uh, leader Schumer made that speech. And the president said that he knows that uh, those remarks, uh, they resonate uh, with many Americans out there. Uh, for our part, we're going to keep supporting Israel in their fight against Hamas. We're going to keep urging them to reduce civilian casualties. And we're going to keep working to get a temporary ceasefire in place so we can get the hostages back home with their families and more additional aid into the people of Gaza. Admiral Kirby went on to address Israel's approval of an offensive into the Gazan border town of Rafah, stressing that Jerusalem had not yet shared its battle plans with Washington. We haven't seen it. Uh, we certainly uh, would welcome the opportunity to see it. And as we've said, Kelly, we uh, can't support uh, a major offensive in Rafah that doesn't also include a credible, achievable, executable plan uh, to take care and to, for the safety and security of the, the more than a million Gazans that are seeking refuge in Rafah, to move in right now in a major way without uh, a proper accounting for all those people uh, would, as we've said, be, be a disaster. And so we're going to keep talking to the Israelis about this. Again, we, we, uh, if they've got that plan, though, we certainly would welcome the opportunity to see it. It is important to highlight that the Israeli War Cabinet greenlighted a delegation for renewed talks in Qatar to try and hammer out an outline for a hostage release deal after the Islamist Hamas, which is seemingly sustaining bitter defeats on the battlefield in the Gaza Strip, is watering down its initial absurd demands. We still have active conversations and now another chance to meet in Doha. That's all to the good. Now, I know for the families out there, it's just another set of agonizing days to wait, and we understand that too. So I don't want to we're cautiously optimistic that things are moving in a good direction, but that doesn't mean that it's done and we're going to have to stay at this till the very, very end. I would say the proposal that was put forward is certainly within the bounds of, uh, in broad brushstrokes, uh, within the bounds of the deal that we've been working on now for several months. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation based nonprofit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, we would appreciate it if you'd consider making a donation. And you can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I'd like to encourage you pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach. God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.